So we are going to look at two basic properties of the Laplace transform. Now we're going to denote the Laplace transform of f of t as equal to big F of s. That's equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t times e to the negative st with respect to t. The first thing we're going to look at is linearity, which means we look at the Laplace transform of a times some function f of t plus b times some other function g of t. Now if we just use the definition of the Laplace transform, this equals the integral from 0 to infinity of a f of t plus b g of t, and then all of that times e to the negative s t dt. Now we know that we can distribute this part here inside of the integral. So we know that this whole thing is equal to a f of t e to the negative s t, and then plus b g of t e to the negative s t. So if we rewrite this integral, remember that the integral is a linear function, which means if we have the integral of this thing plus this thing, we can take the integral of the first part, a f of t e to the negative s t, and then add the integral of the second part, b g of t e to the negative s t dt. Of course, this integral is going to be from 0 to infinity in both cases. But also remember that if we have a constant in an integral, we can bring that constant to the outside. So we have a times the integral of f of t e to the negative st. And then we can do the same thing with the other part, b, times this other integral with g. Notice that this integral from 0 to infinity of f of t e to the negative st, that's going to be a times the Laplace transform of f of t. And we're going to call that f of s with a big F. And then on the other side, we have b times this Laplace transform is going to be big G of s. So this property is known as the linearity of the Laplace transform. So if we take the transform of a f of t plus b g of t, we get a f of s plus b g of s. This is useful because when we have a differential equation, with y double prime and y prime and y added together, we can split all of the parts up and do each of them separately. Now the next property we're going to look at is a different Laplace transform. We're going to take the transform of e to the a t times f of t, where a is some constant. So again, let's use the definition of the Laplace transform to figure this out. We have the integral from 0 to infinity of, I'm going to write f of t first, and then we have e to the a t times e to the negative s t dt. Notice in this case, we can bring this e to the a t and e to the negative s t together. I'm going to write that. We can add the exponents. So we get a t minus s t. But I'm going to write that, if we factor out the t, I'm going to write this a minus s as negative s minus a. So you can distribute this out if you want. Notice you'll get a t minus s t. So up here, we'll get e to the negative s minus a times t dt. The reason that's important is because now we can substitute a different variable for s minus a. So if we let, for example, u equal s minus a, because it's an integral, you might be tempted to find du. But notice we're not integrating with respect to s or a. So we actually don't have to do anything else. All we have to do is say, well, this is the integral from 0 to infinity of f of t times e to the negative s minus a is u t dt. And this is exactly the definition of the Laplace transform. But instead of being in terms of s, this is going to be in terms of u. So we get big F of u. And now we can substitute back in that this equals big F of s minus a. So notice in this case that when we multiply some function by e to the a t, that just has the effect of shifting the Laplace transform over by the value of a to the right.